I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Mr. Minister, welcome to New York. This is Uzi Landau, Minister of Tourism of the State of Israel, a man who has served his country through many posts over these last years of war fighting side by side, the alliance with the United States. Mr. Minister, we do not ignore the fact that these days are troubled in my country and in yours because of recent and present conflicts. However, we're here to sp speak of the joys of Israel and the touring of Israel. You were born in Haifa, and I want to call upon your memories of growing up. This is before the State of Israel, 1943, I believe, before. and you remember the mandate. You've watched Israel transform now for more than 60 years, and now you're the Minister of Tourism. I know it's a joy, but what surprises you, Mr. Minister? What, when you look at it, you go, I can't believe this is true. Thank you. Barbara Tuckman, the historian's famous historian, once said that Israel is the only nation in the world that is governing itself in the same territory, using the same language, with the same religion, with the same capital, as we did 3,000 years ago. And as you live today in modern Israel, it's a country that touches uh, frontiers in science and technology. High-tech country, startup nation. At the same time, when you pick the Bible and you go through the pages, you can go and visit and tour the country where almost under every stone that you uncover and you dig, you find a story. If you go through the pages of the Bible, you can see what was the story 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. This is amazing. And this is uh, an especially important uh, experience for people like myself, who before we came to politics, we were uh, touring the country by foot. Right. By foot. Uh, during our youth movement's times, I love it now. I'm following my, uh, my hobby of touring the country as a Minister of Tourism. Let's tell stories of your by foot. I know because you've told me that you were at Masada, which is itself a marvel of construction and history, well to the south. When you were young, when there was no magical elevator uh, lift that took you up, and you climbed Masada. What is that like? Would you recommend to people coming to Israel today to climb it, uh, to climb it and not take the elevator? Well, of course, to climb it, uh, to climb it, it is something that uh, is closer. Well, it used to be more close to kind of, ex of, a, of a sport extreme. Today, it's much easier. You can do it with a cable car. Yet, the real breathtaking history of Masada is much more important than the physical, uh, 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 than the physical experience necessary to climb it. It's a beautiful sight. It is just overlooking the most, uh, the, the, the Dead Sea, the deepest place on earth. And the historical story about it, that is uh, the outpost of uh, the Jews still standing and combating the might armies of the Roman Emperor. And the way it was all done, including uh, taking their life of all of those there, just in order not to become slaves at the hands of the Romans, you have to go and see, uh, listen to the story that uh, we are trying these days just to continue the legacy, but for life, not for death. The joy for me when I got to the top of Masada for the first time and walked over, you can see the ramp that the Romans built in order to crash through the walls of Masada. You can see the Roman camps down there, 2,000 years, the, it's just... And you can see the dike that yes. they have put in order to just have their siege more efficient. You can see it until today. And you can see this, uh, this system of cisterns right. that would accumulate the water during a flood in that desert. Once in seven years, you would accumulate enough water that would then suffice for the rest of the entire period until the next flood including the bath room for uh, the king, King Herod, who built it. Right. It is something that, which is different. Herod the architect. Masada was a southern palace. We're heading to Jerusalem now, but going north, there are the Dead Sea Scrolls, and you've mentioned the Jordan River Valley that ends in the Dead Sea. 
walks in the Dead Sea, it's a very strange experience. I'd recommend it to everybody, but I can't describe it easily. It's not water, it's, it's minerals. And of course, it's minerals that people favor. Would you recommend swimming in the Dead Sea? Well, uh, I would recommend floating in the Dead floating Sea. Floating in the Dead Sea. You can float in the Dead Sea, you can only read a paper, but also I saw some people who had a makeup uh, right. while they were floating. It is something which is it's an experience that one who likes something which is, I would say, strange, but something that you could also cover yourself with mud in order to perhaps help some of, uh, of diseases or skin diseases that you have. It all goes together. It's just beautiful. Climbing from the Dead Sea, from the Jordan River Valley to Jerusalem, we're going uphill. And there's a moment you pass, and the roads are wonderful. They've been improving them all the time. Very fast roads. But there's a moment you pass sea level. And it's a shock to realize how far down you've been when you're down in the Dead Sea. And when you're coming up, you then realize that this is the same path, although it's a wide highway now, that was followed by the story of the Good Samaritans. Well, the, the story of the Good Samaritan, and please, the place of the Good, uh, the, of good Samaritan, is not far from the zero level, right. from the sea level. Right. And today, this place has also been uh, developed so that people could come to the place, enjoy the history, be there, and just have the beautiful view. You could look either to Jerusalem and see Jerusalem silhouette on the hills westward, and you can look the other way around, and you could see the Judean desert. By the way, this is the place where King David, as he was running for his life, uh, these were the places that he was hiding himself, including the first Christian people, as they wanted to have some, some, some shelters from the authorities that, uh, that persecuted them. These were roughly the places and by the way, today too, when Christians are suffering in the Middle East, the place where they can feel safe, the only place in the Middle East is Israel. Yes. And we are proud of that. Yes, let's go to Jerusalem because it's important to establish the fact you're coming up the hills. Jerusalem is in the hills of Israel. Every, it, it's the high point. On top of the Israel. And you come into the city, and it's changing all the time because of the road construction and the building. But I'm heading to the old city, which, of course, is a sentimental favorite because when I walk in the old city, I can see where Jesus entered. I can see where the Romans and the Roman, the Roman legions were stationed. I can see the Crusaders. It's all in one place. It's so many ghosts wandering around. It's, uh, it can be confusing, and it can be disorienting. However, what is your recommendation for people when they first come to Jerusalem? Wh where would you ask them to start to look at the city? It depends very much on the tastes and the interests of each of us. You just mentioned the richness. Right. That envelope of Jerusalem, you walk in the streets that kings were walking. Right. That empires who crushed uh, uh, Jerusalem, and we're on the way from either Mesopotamia, Babylon, uh, Assyria, to the south, to Egypt, another empire, and vice versa. You walk the trails of, uh, of the prophets, and from there to the northern part of Samaria or down to Judea, and you can take the Bible and go along that, and you can go in uh, those uh, history uh, important places, for example, for uh, the Christian people through the Via Dolorosa, Via Dolorosa, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Church of the Sepulchre. You could go to the Muslims, right. who also conquered and occupied this city for a certain period of time. You can go to the Crusaders, to the Ottomans, for example. You just see the, the beautiful walls of Jerusalem. They were uh, built by the Ottoman Empire, by Suleiman, uh, Suleiman, the Sultan Suleiman. That's just merely a thousand years ago, yes. Yeah, well, you see, whatever you touch, whatever your interest is, it will be breathtaking for me as a Jew. You said that I'm living in a Tel Aviv uh, a suburb in Ranana, it's true. One of my fringe benefits of my capacity is that uh, driving every day to Jerusalem. And just seeing the silhouette of the city, 
with a sunrise over there. That's breathtaking. It's a joy. And of course, the most favorite place for me in Jerusalem is the, is the Western Wall. Yes. Let us look at the Western Wall as a development from the city of David, because over these last, uh, this last decade, you're well aware the archaeologists have discovered a miracle of, of the oldest city that was there, that the temple and the second temple that was destroyed by the Romans and Temple Mount is new compared to the city of David. That's right. And I urge everyone going today to take advantage of the excavations that are underway. Well, this is an experience in one's lifetime just to go and see that. Yes. It's something that, again, you go and you follow the book of the books, what it is said over there, what you read there, and then you go and you excavate and you just find things almost one to one. So it is interesting to anyone who is interested in archaeology as such, in particular in the history, I would say it's not just simply history. It's the history of our Judeo-Christian civilization. Yes. It's how the Bible set, I would say, it, it's where all, everything has started. Has, it's the cradle of our creation, of our civilization. That's where it all started. From the city of David up to the Temple Mount and from there to the rest of the country. I'm speaking with Minister Uzi Landau, Minister of Tourism for the State of Israel. When we come back, we'll come to modern Israel. We'll go down to where the minister lives in Tel Aviv. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. <laughs> 